Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to see how to use the Zim Motion Controller. All right, so let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We've seen the Motion Controller in past tutorials. I think it was when we were looking at sprites, for instance. So under Collections here, we've got a collection specifically for the Motion Controller, and indeed there's a sprite butterfly. So there's the motion controller making the butterfly follow the mouse movement. Here it is. Now it's it won't move until we hit a mouse down. So that's another type. Mouse down. Uh, we can also do key down and control the motion control or control the butterfly with key down. <laughs> Maybe not so natural. We can go on a diagonal though. There we go. Diagonal. Ooh. And there's a game button and also a game stick. So a joystick uh, for my game controller and that works quite well. Uh, here's a swipe. So I would have to swipe on the screen to kind of push that over. Oops, swipe and up and swipe down. Come on down here, butterfly. But the mouse move works fine on a touch screen too. So here I am using my finger now instead of a, a, a the mouse and it's following. So this works quite well on a touch screen just the mouse move. So let's go see how to use these in Animate then. We'll reduce this down. Let's close that. Oop. Oh, we're going to control a car. Nice. So that's a movie clip on the screen there with or on the stage with uh, instance name of car so that we can control it with code. I've also made the stage white because the car came from the web and I didn't bother getting the background parent trans uh, PNG. So uh, anyway, you'll want to get a PNG background transparent probably for that. And let's go in and take a look at some code F9. We will call this Zim-25. Woo! We're almost at our 30 that we plan to go to. And this one will be called Motion Controller. So that looks like this. New Motion Controller. This dot car. And let's have a look. Oh, I know what we forgot to do. Do you know? We forgot to bring in Zim. Okay. So uh, under the more settings here, we can bring in the HTML, uh, import the template, Zim Shim, like that. We could have imported that. That came from the zip file that we showed you way back in the first lesson. But under basics, we want to do a couple things here too. So in the end, in the first lesson, we created a profile and exported it. Now we're going to import that profile. So there we go. We have Zim Shim has come in and we have our stage like we like it. We hit OK. And Control Enter, try that again. Now when we press, our car goes to that location. <laughs> Ooh, the sideways hovering car. Okay, so not quite um, natural, we could say, but that was the, the press, um, or the, the default one, which is mouse down. Okay, F9, where'd our F9 go? There we are. So we can basically say, hey, instead of that, let's use a mouse move. So this is the type right here. Also, I want to see where we're moving on the stage. So I want to set an outer color to the frame. Uh, in Zim, we're given F for the frame. We're given S for the stage. We're given W for the stage width. And we're given height for the stage height. We want to control the frames dot outer color is equal to gray. That's a Zim color gray. There's also, if you put quotes around it, it would be HTML, or you could use quote, number sign, whatever, to get colors. But uh, if you don't put anything, it's a Zim color. And we go Control Enter. There's our outer color gray. Oh, and look, uh, while we move the mouse here, the car is following it. Uh, but what we want really is the car to orient itself in the direction that we're moving. So. Let's go take a look at, uh, but back on the Zim site here, we will go just up to features. Reduce that down a bit into docs. So here's the docs. And if we type in motion controller, motion or just motion, there's the motion controller, a target. So these are the parameter names, target, type, speed, axis. So we could just make it horizontal or vertical. 
boundary. We can stop it from going off the stage or, or whatever we want. Uh, map is uh, which keys we're going to use, I think. Diagonal, damp, flip, orient. Okay, so there's orient. Here's this first person as well, which will really help us when we go to the key, key down version. That'll be our final version we'll head to. So uh, that's a little bit about it. You can read about those parameters and see examples down here. Those are all the different things that we can set to. And so what we'll do is we'll put the squiggly brackets in here. We'll use the Zim Duo technique to, instead of using regular parameters like that and having to go null, 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 null until we finally found our orient, we're going to put squiggly brackets around. We'll drop them down like so. This one is the target, is this dot car, the type. And now we put in the names of the parameters here, comma, orient, colon, true. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, okay, that's better. So that would be good for mobile. Wee. So as we as we put our finger down, the car will follow our finger, and we can adjust the speed of that, etc. Crash, <laughs> crash. Well, it crashed up here at the top. Okay, so uh, that's probably fine for mobile, but on a desktop or laptop, we often use key presses. So let's have a look at what the key press looks like. We'll comment that out and we'll make it a type. Toop. Type colon key down comma. And let's have a look. So now this will work with keys. Left, right, left, up. About an angle. Okay, but it's a little bit, um, you know, a little bit uh, left, right, up, down. What do we call that? Anyway, it's not as fluid as we might desire. But that would work well for a game where, say, you had a character down here and you're catching stuff. You're catching things that are falling. Or if you were on a, a board that just has squares to move that way. Let's try, though, instead, or as well as all this, to add in first person, colon, true, like that, and see what happens. I think you'll like this. Oh, <laughs> you won't quite like it. First person is ready to go forward, up. So it's ready to go up like that. And so it, it looks like that. So right now it's all broken because the car is going sideways. So in other words, we have to adjust the car a little bit to help out with the default here. The best way to do this is go into the car itself and rotate the shape in here. So there we're rotating the shape. Pick the shape up and put it so that it's it's right here. Otherwise, you'll have um, alignment issues. So you see how it's right on the zero, zero. And then we come outside and take that registration point, stick it in the middle, or close to it. All right, get it there. OK. So there we go, the car is now ready to go forward in first person mode. And we go control enter. Ooh, yes. Oh, I'm totally driving now. So that is, that's perfect. Can we back up? Doot, 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 doot. Mm, yes, we can. So that's wonderful. Okay, so let's go and uh, add something for it to hit. <laughs> Crash! Okay, uh, however, that's wonderful. Keyboard, first person controller, and quite easy to do, as you saw there. So if we're going to make this car hit something, and we're going to apply Zim methods to it, then we would want to Zimify it. So const car is equal to Zimify this dot car. Okay, and then we'll reference it in here as just car. So the car is a zimified version of the car. And now we can make something else. How about a wall? Const wall is equal to a new rectangle. Or you could put this on the stage as a movie clip or whatever. Anyway, there's a new rectangle and we'll make it 50 wide and 600 high and we'll make it red. We'll position this dot pose at, hmm, how about 100 over, zero from the middle, 
from the right and from the center. Okay, there we go. So now we have a car and a wall. Shall we see it? Ooh, car and a wall. But we're just going under the wall at the moment. It's an underpass. <laughs> okay, so we want um, to hit that. And when we hit, we can find out, I think there's an event to say that it's, it's moving. The motion controller will add an event or at least a property saying it's moving. But uh, if we want to check all the time, uh, here's how we could do it. We could say ticker dot add the following function. Um, so, oh, some sort of arrow function in there, like so. And what the ticker is, is it runs at the frame rate. Uh, ticker was given to us by CreateJS. It's like an enter frame, kind of. It runs at the frame rate. Uh, we've adjusted the ticker, though. This is a Zim ticker. And the Zim ticker, there's a single ticker. And what it does is it handles all of the an Zim animate. It handles dragging. It handles wiggle, etc. And at the end of this queue, and here we can add functions to it as well, and that just adds them to the queue, a list of functions to run. At the end, there's a single stage.update. And so that's how we uh, are efficient. We manage only a single stage.update at the end of the ticker. <coughs> if there's nothing in the ticker, no stage.updates. So here we are adding a function to the ticker. And in this function, we'll test if the car.hit test. Oh, we haven't done hit test. Hit test bounds. There's lots of different types of hit tests. Uh, the wall. So this is asking, is the rectangle around the car hitting the rectangle around the wall? Which is a good one because both these shapes are quite rectangular. Um, but there's maybe nine different types of hit tests. We should do a tutorial on that. So yeah, let's do the next tutorial on the Zim hit test. So look forward to that. But for now, if the car is hitting the wall, what shall we do? How about wall dot remove from? The ticker will be applying a stage that updates, so we don't need to worry about that. And are you ready? Bum bum bum. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So you might be wondering how to ride the car on a track. I mean, that gets us sort of part way there if we hit the edge if we hit the edge then uh, we could crash for instance uh, but there might be other types of hit tests that will help you if you have a curvy track for instance and in the end often riding around a track might be easier to do with physics where it just sort of bumps off the wall a little bit and you can continue moving with forces We'll show you physics in a future tutorial. Great. Okay, we got some tutorials mapped up, huh? Wow. Anyway, do you like that? Isn't that nice? I am Dr. Abstract. And if we want, we can just review this code one more time, see how easy it was. We have a car. We have a motion controller. There's a variety of different things that we can do to control that car. It's really nice to see it with a joystick as well. Works fine. And then we added a hit test to find out if it was hitting, and we removed. And we're going to take a tutorial about hit test next. All right, so I'm Dr. Abstract. I hope you have been having a good day or night. You're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to hear from you there or on the Adobe community forums as well. All the best. Cheers.